Well, it has been an adrenaline-filled sighting, that's for sure. And little Tumba is now sitting on top of his mound, and he's just softly contact calling to mom, just trying to work out where she's gone. Please come and find me again, and whether or not she actually managed to kill anything. So that's why he's making these little soft calls like that, just trying to see what's where she's gone and where mom is, and hopefully she was successful that he could then get something to eat. But he's got to be one of the most exquisite looking animals I've ever seen. Just the color of his eyes and the markings are in absolutely amazing. A little pink nose still, which shows he's still a little bit younger. Now we know obviously that pink noses don't necessarily mean that it's a young animal, but you'll often find with young animals that their noses are a lot pinker than when they get a bit older. But there's your screenshot for those of you that wanted screenshots. That is it. Tumba saying hello to all of you and posing as best he can for all of you. There we go. Wow, that is special. For anybody out there that has ever sort of thought about or not really known what their favorite animal is or the beauty of wildlife, that picture right there, you cannot tell me ever that that is not one of the most beautiful things you could ever see. A leopard's coat is just the most magnificent thing and to see them up on a mound like that and to be able to see views of their eyes and to see their ears twitching it's just one of the most magical experiences and i can't tell you just how amazing it is to sit in such close proximity to one of the most elusive predators of the world they really are phenomenal animals and it's such a special thing to be able to do this and i really do wish that every single one of you that is watching can experience this at some stage in your life so not only just through safari live but at some stage by some way that you get to experience that proximity to one of these cats it's just it's a humbling experience to be a part of it and to be sitting here so close to to one of the most iconic animals in the world it's it's special don't you agree folk mm, very speechless. yeah speechless is a good word for it sometimes so Travis, you say he's so photogenic. Well, I couldn't agree more, Travis. I think he's got to be one of the, the most photogenic leopards I've seen. And I can't wait to see this guy and follow his progress. And I hope that he becomes a dominant male in some area that we get to be able to follow his sort of movements and the progress that he has. And we get to be able to see him as a big dominant male because I think he is going to be so striking when he reaches that seven years old and he's going to be big and bulky and he's going to develop that bigger head. I reckon he's going to be flawless in his sort of older years which is going to be amazing to see so hopefully it's somewhere where we can follow his progress and see where he ends up because as we know these young males do end up moving into other areas and i don't know if he's going to be able to spend too much longer in this area that is so cool So, Laurie, you say his ears are like satellites. Yes, unfortunately, he does have very large ears, but he's grown into them a lot. When we first started to see him, when James first saw him, James used to die with laughter because he used to say that the ears were just far too large for this cat's head, and he looked completely ridiculous. He has grown into them somewhat, and he will continue to grow into them as he gets bigger and older, and his neck develops and his head develops, so those ears are going to start to get smaller in relation. But those big ears are vitally important for a leopard because they move around in thick dense areas much like kudu nyala all these other animals that end up having large ears these guys are the same reason they've got to be able to hear very well to detect prey animals ahead of them so they use those ears much like satellites just to turn all the time to determine what is actually going on around them wow little tumba you are quite something Ah, white lady Ern, you want to say, should we do a one word tweet for all of this? So you're saying, let's have a one word tweet. Well, there we go. One word tweet as to what you think about, I don't know, about Tumba, or do we do Tandy and Tumba, or do we do just the morning in general? What do you think, folk? Oh, tough one. I don't think there's one word for this whole morning. No, there's no one word for the whole morning, but let's do a one word tweet on the sheer beauty that is Tumba. What Tumba and this picture right there means to you guys at home there we go that's our one word tweet for me it's i don't know what the word is i think it's just speechless is a good one ferg i'm going to steal yours <laughs> hello beautiful boy oh, that is 
phenomenal. You're going to be a lady slayer later in life, little Tumba. Yes, I'm talking about you. Look at that, he's looking straight at us. Isn't that amazing? That right there is the best thing in the world. When a leopard looks at you like that, it, to me it looks as though they look into the deepest part of your soul and it's almost like they analyze every little bit of you and they work out exactly what you are, who you are, what's brought you into this place and it's almost like they can work out what your character is by just staring at you. I don't know why I feel that way, but it's, it feels like they're searching the deepest depths of your sort of brain and, and your being when they stare at you like that. Much the same as lions too, it's just a funny feeling when the two of them look at you dead on like that. And you can see he's breathing quite heavily and that's because he was moving around quite a bit. So James Henry, you want to know what a sign will be if uh, Tumba is a lady slayer? Well, I don't know. Who knows, really? We'll have to we'll have to think about this. I'm sure Hosanna in his own right is going to also be a lady slayer because he's another one of the beautiful young males that we have out here. And for sure, these two together are some of my favorite young males that I've ever spent time around. I, I really did enjoy spending time around Waba Yizo when he was young, but there's been other young males that I really haven't sort of formed too much of an attachment to. But this one and Hosanna, to me, are just, I don't know, there's something about the two of them. And also, I suppose it's their backstories that they've got and the way that they've kind of been a part of all of this has really sort of molded them as, as characters in our lives. But hopefully... Either way, Tumba and Hosanna won't have James Hendry's track record when it comes to ladies because that's going to be a bit dismal, according to Byron. Byron always tells me that James had a struggle until his later years, so hopefully these two will not be the same and that they'll be on it straight away from when they're young, growing boys. Are you still waiting for mum? So, Roshni, you say flawless. Well, indeed, because he's not going to look like that all his life. As male leopards go along, unfortunately, they're going to get scratches all over the face, going to get little pieces out of the ears. And so at the moment, his ears are perfect. His face is perfect. He hasn't got any cuts or scrapes yet. And that means that he's in as good a condition as he'll ever be. Also, he's being fed by mom, so he's nice and fat and plump and round. So he's going to have tougher times ahead when he leaves mom. Although if we look at Hosanna, Hosanna's done so well to be able to stay as healthy as he has. Now, Marge, I didn't catch what you said. Sorry, I was talking too much. Megs, if you can just tell me again what Marge said for her one weird tweet. Breathtaking. Well, Marge, indeed, it is breathtaking. Like Ferg said, it, it becomes speechless. You just kind of have to stop and almost just take it in and, and absorb it and... He really is breathtakingly beautiful. I'll get it out eventually. I love how he just listens to everything that goes on around him and watches the world go by. He just sees his vehicles going past and just kind of takes it in his stride. And it's amazing how much more relaxed he's become over the last few months. He's you know, he started out when he was first born with when he had his sibling. They were quite skittish, the two of them. And over time, they've become so chilled. And that's because of the amount of time that we've been able to spend with them. The more he's been moving around now with mom, and the more time they've been coming to sort of Juma and, and spending time at Chitwa, the more time everyone's been able to spend with them. You know, when they go into Torchwood, because of the density of the vehicles in Torchwood is so low, a lot of the time the leopards that grow up there tend to be quite skittish to start with. And so now that he's spending time where there's a little bit more sort of commercialization and more vehicles, so you've got a situation where He's now relaxing a lot more. Now, I believe mom is lying down actually somewhere in front of us here. She's in that area, but still waiting patiently, this little guy, for mom to arrive. Somewhere in that thicket there, apparently, is where mom is. Z, you say bedazzled? Indeed. He does have that ability to bedazzle one and to make you kind of feel as though you've been dazzled by a sheer beauty and to think that that's what we see in nature is just amazing to me. Right, well, I think we're going to carry on just 
admiring the view really because why not it's a beautiful leopard on top of a termite mound and while we do that i believe james hendry who can tell us maybe what he thinks hosanna will be and has a beautiful view of his own